Hey, it's Chuck Armstrong with Loudwire Nights, and this is Loudwire Nights On Demand. I want the whole world to know about Gene Lewis, so it was so great hanging with him on the show, man. He is the front man for Bullets and Octane, and they've got a pretty killer new song out right now. This conversation first aired on Wednesday, August 21st. Enjoy. Man, I am so excited for this conversation because uh, the second I heard this song and saw the video, I got hooked. And then uh, I realized this song is even next level because it features the one and only Steve Stevens, uh, longtime guitarist for Billy Idol, also longtime collaborator with Billy Morrison. And uh, on top of all of that, as you're going to hear tonight, it's just catchy as hell. And uh, our world needs more rock songs like that. The band is Bullets and Octane. The song is No One Gets Out Alive and helping us celebrate tonight is frontman Gene Lewis. Gene, thank you so much for hanging, man. Dude, thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. Thank you. So the new video, No One Gets Out Alive, it is out. The song's out. How are you feeling, man? I'm feeling great, man. It's been uh, it's been quite a ride. It all it all it all came together so quickly. Like uh, literally within like a month, it was all like from the idea of the song, wow. Steve Steven sitting us up and everything and making the video. We just, it just it's crazy how fast it's going. Yeah. So I mean, I, I gotta ask, but how, how did that happen? So I mean, you've been making music, you know, since 1998. Uh, your debut EP came out 21 years ago. Uh, and you're still experiencing new things, right? Like collaborating, working with Steve Stevens. Uh, yeah. So how, how did this uh, how did this come together and come together so quickly? Yeah. So um, basically, um, there's this app that the kids use called Tic Tac or Tic Tock or something, <laughs> something yeah, yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I'm barely ever on there really, and um, I you know there's only like a few people that really interact, and I seen this this Steve Stevens you know liking stuff, and I'm like, well, you know, there's a whole bunch of fake you know profiles these days. So at this point in my career, I'm just kind of straightforward. I'm like, hey, man, if this is you, hit me up. I'd love to <laughs> connect with you. And, uh, you know, I didn't think much of it. I gave, I left my number, just taking a full-blown chance. And the next day, I got a missed phone call from a 666 number. And I'm like, well, that can only be. And uh, <laughs> sure enough, it was. And, you know, we started talking. He said he was a fan of the band. And he was really into it because of my positive videos that I post on Instagram mm -hmm. and stuff like that of jogging and weird stuff. And um, so I'm like, hey, I, I would love for you to hear this new song we're working on. I sent it over to him and uh, he's like, dude, it's great. And I go, well, if you notice, there's a spot in there for a, a guitar solo. You know, I don't know. And he's like, I'd love to. And I'm like, holy wow. cow. So I, I sent it over to him. And within like six hours, he literally sent the recording back. And I was like, oh, my God, it's really him. And I was like, well, hey, man, you know you already did that. Might be, you want to be in the music video? I'm just totally going for the jugular, right? <laughs> yeah, and, uh, yeah. and and he responds back with, well, if I'm going to be in the video, I might as well play on the entire song. And I'm like, holy cow, this <laughs> just gets better and better. So uh, literally we, we knocked it out and within like a week or so. He flew down from Vegas just for the video and we shot it in like two hours in downtown Los Angeles. And then here we are, like last night, we were on the uh, Matt Pinfield show on the radio station out here. And yeah. uh, it's just it's just like just keeps going and just grabbing more people's attention. And the mood and it's just very motivating and, and inspiring. Like you said, it's like we've been doing this a very long time. So to have something like this really does like relight the fire of, you know what, man, like this is really cool. Let's just keep going and see what happens, see who else comes out of the woodworks and opportunities yeah. that come up along with it. So it's really I, neat, man. I, I was going to say, I mean after doing this for so long, like to still experience new things like this or fresh things like this, like it's, it's just gotta be such a good feeling. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's kind of the blessing of it all. It's like there, there hasn't been fame and there hasn't been a bunch of money. And when you, when you kind of come to peace with that of like, well, I can't stop doing this. Every time I say I need to like figure something out, you know, we have these clocks inside of us that are like, I need stability. I need security. This isn't you you freak out every day. At least I do. And, you know, I, I just realized that I'm going to have to keep writing and recording. Every time I think I'm going to stop, I pick up the guitar and I'm like, this is who I am. This is what I do. And, you know, I have to give it also to Clay Davies, my, my songwriting partner and uh, lead guitar player and producer of the band. Like, you know, he definitely stepped in the last couple of years. He's new to the group and like, you know, gave a whole nother like just opened me up again yeah. to to new ideas. Cause after a while, you know, we all have like this invisible pocket of ideas we pull from at all times throughout the years. And it gets a little bit wider, but it definitely speeds up the process when you have people that really kind of inject you with new life and everything. And so I'm really into like doing some new collaborations. So anybody out there, if you want to collaborate, let's get on it. You know, <laughs> I love that, man. No, I feel like that's uh that's my number one job is just putting stuff out to the rock gods. Right. And I uh, try to manifest right. some of that stuff. <laughs> that's exactly it, man. I, I love hearing that. And I'm curious too, like over the years, as you've kind of 
had those feelings of, well, I, I need to, you know, I need to pay the bills or I need the stability or that. How do you, how do you balance that with this also, this, this desire, this passion or this realization? Like, well, I can't not do what I was put on this earth to do. And maybe it won't lead to fame and success. Maybe it'll lead to a little fame and success. Maybe who knows what it'll lead to, but you can't not do yeah. that. So how, how do you balance those two things? It's tough, man. I, I wish I could plug you into my brain because yeah, some of the stuff yeah. I probably, probably shouldn't mention on the show, but I, I've had to do some <laughs> illegal weird things along the, along my path. I've had to get to into some areas of life living in Los Angeles that I maybe shouldn't have, but you know, you, you have to pay the bills, but I've also lived a very minimal life though too. You know, I kind of like the fireman thing where if the alarm goes off, I can pretty much grab with two hands the things I have in my life and be out the door and on my way. And um, I, I also think that that's kind of what's kept me grounded. I've, I've tried different things in my life of having a house, having nice cars, having this, having that. And it really didn't do much more to me than distract me from this, this entire thing. So you have to kind of make that decision. Like I did early on as a kid of like, it's going to be tough, but this is how it's got to be. And I don't, you know, don't have kids. I don't have things like that. So in my mind, it's like albums are like my children. The songs are like my children. And you put something out. Maybe it's not your best. Maybe it acts out a little bit. And you have to turn them into juvenile school and things. Like that. <laughs> but you just, you know, I don't know, man. You just keep, you keep having faith and keep trying to do the best thing you can do and push yourself and grow and mature as an artist and a yeah. songwriter and um, cross your fingers. I mean, it's a different time than it used to be. And I have to remind myself that there is opportunities and it's not about, you know, being 12 years old and becoming famous on TikTok as much as it is, you know, just keep writing great music and that will push through. So that's yeah. where I'm at. Well, it's interesting too, because yeah, I mean, it is a different time and yet your passion or your desire, the way you approach your music doesn't change, right? You pick up a guitar, you start writing, like you, you envision that kind of thing, but also you do adapt. And so you do post videos on Instagram or you, you, yeah. you have a, an audience on TikTok. And even if it's a small audience compared to you know, crazy influencers or whatever, big enough right. that Steve Stevens started liking stuff and that, and that <laughs> led, led down this path, man. Is it weird for yeah. you? I mean, over those, you know, over the decades of you doing this, no doubt you've adapted here or there or the new, new technology, new trends have come. Is it weird or uncomfortable for you to, to jump into something like Instagram or TikTok and put yourself out there? Um, I think at first I was a little reluctant to the whole thing, but you know, I think that's just old ego and pride of, you know, I, it was the same as it was when, it, you know, just learning drums or guitar and stuff like that. And then all of a sudden you have to be your own producer, your own engineer. You have to kind of be your own booking, everything. Like you started to have to like adapt to, you have to do everything yourself. And you, know, you have to make that decision. It's like, if well, if I'm not going to do it, then don't expect yourself to launch forward in any yeah. means. Like there's no, there's no room for that anymore because anybody who wants to find good music, if you're not willing to do it, they're going to find it somewhere. Yeah. So either get on, get on board or get out of the way. That's just how the world works. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's clear that even if you've been uncomfortable in the past with, with adapting here or there that, yeah, you have to make that decision that, well, if I don't want to adapt, then chances are the world's going to pass me by, you know, cause the world's yeah. moving on and people are moving on and things change and, and you're not going to affect that, you know, whether it's, it starts or stops. So either you yeah. jump on board and not that you just totally change and go into it, but how do you adapt and how yeah. do you fit your life into that? Yeah. I mean, absolutely. Isn't it something around, I don't know what the numbers are these days, but something roughly around a hundred to 125 or 130,000 songs are being released on Spotify daily. Something, something like that, yeah. insane. And we're talking about a generation out there that needs instant gratification of a push of a button to be, you know, entertained. So, yeah, you know, yeah. you, it's already hard enough, even if you play the game and do all the fit checks and stuff on Instagram and TikTok yeah. and all that stuff. I mean, they're still going to hear 10, five seconds, 10 seconds would be a blessing, five seconds of a song and be uh, on to the next one, on to the next one. They don't have as uh, Rick Beato, I'm sure, you know, he always talks about the sweat equity that we, right, at yeah. least my generation grew up with of like mowing lawns, saving money, having your mom drive you to the record store. You taking a full blown gamble of spending all your, your allowance on one album, going home, looking at all the liner notes, memorizing all the photos, what's Duff wearing in Guns N' Roses Appetite. You know, like that was the journey. And now, yeah. you know, right now, if they're getting it for free, they have no value to it. So of course they're not gonna stick around. So it's it's a weird world, but it's it's exciting. You, ha you can't let yourself get too bummed out because that's not gonna really do a damn thing for you. You have to That's find right, a man. way to get creative and just kind of have fun with it. And uh, I don't know, putting out as much content as possible and finding little ways to make it a little bit different each time. 
it's kind of fun. I mean, you know, for some people, they don't think that necessarily acting and fashion and things like that go along with music. It's more of like a the non look look or we don't care look. But to me, I'm like, man, I'm going to channel all that stuff. I love comedy. I love clothes. I love different things. And it's like, okay, let's create as much music as possible and make as many music videos as possible. And let's put out one music video every five weeks or something. And let's find something interesting. This video, I'm going to play a cowboy. And the next video, I'm going to rob a bank or, you know, and, and just lean into it and, and become 10 years old again and get into your imagination and just let go and have fun and not really care what people think. I mean, if I've done it this long and there's no huge success or money, I'm not a household name, that's for sure. You got to look at it like, what am I going to do to have fun? Because I do feel like the, the kids these days, the new generation, they're smart and they peel back the layers of the onion. They're going to smell if it's not really genuine, you know? That's right. So. You just got to like, let go, not take yourself too seriously, write the best songs you can and meet a lot of people. Like I'm full blown blessed that Steve Stevens jumped on board. What a, what a prayer answered, man. And what a sweetheart of a guy. They say, don't meet your heroes, but you know, because they're little, but this guy is the most supportive and nicest guy. And it just really reinvigorated our, our push. And we're so excited about the single, the music video turned out great. It just all worked out. And, yeah. you know, I yeah. love that, man. I love hearing all that. And, and also, you know, you mentioned Matt Pinfield earlier too, and he's a, he's a good friend of this yeah. show and we, we love Pinfield man and celebrating him every chance we get. And just, you know, you, you know, getting the, getting that support again, that love from him and just seeing all these worlds cross over. It's, it's really cool to see, man. Yeah. I love that guy, man. I, I try to stump him from time to time. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll, find, I'll find a weird band from the early nineties from the middle of the sticks, Springfield, Illinois. And I'll be like, what do you know about this band? And he'll be like, well, Gene, that band started in 1983 <laughs> and they came out with their debuts. That, so I actually did that to him once. We had a showcase in 2001 or 2002 and he was standing in the front row and I couldn't help but to to do my Matt Pinfield impression. And what an awesome guy. Like that, yeah, I don't yeah. think there's not a thing he doesn't know about any genre of music. Like let's talk about Motown. Oh, he'll just whip you. He will tell Crazy, you everything. Yeah. yeah, I don't know how he remembers all that stuff. <laughs> I know, it's, 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 <laughs> a pretty, it's pretty amazing, man. Well, listen, I, I love hearing all the stuff you're saying too just about like, you know, the decisions you've made or, or, or you know, the way you balance different things. Cause as much as that's true for you and you personally, and as, as much as that's true for people getting into music or staying in music, you know, I think it's true for everybody in any vocation, you know, regardless of what you do, like making that decision is getting that new car going to make you happy. And if it doesn't, well then what's next, you know, and, and how do you balance that? And how do, how do you adapt to a changing world and how do you make sacrifices, but how do you stay true to yourself? Like, I, I just, I love hearing all that, man. And it boils down to, you use the word genuine. I use the word probably way too often, but authentic, but it's that, yeah. it's that realness, whatever it is that you do, man, whether it's, it's making music, making music videos, caring about fashion, whatever that is, or man, staring yeah. at a spreadsheet or whatever. Like, I don't know how you make that authentic, but if you can, man, bless you, you know, and, 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 and get the most out of that and whatever that might be. Yeah. I mean, the creative force of having a zero budget when it comes to making music videos or recordings, it's always like, okay, everything we just used in this last music video, we got to go online and go on Poshmark and eBay and sell it so we can have money to do the next thing. And then yeah. that kind of keeps it kind of fun because it's like, well, what do we have? What are our resources around us? There's a, you know, there's an ice cream shop down the street. I kind of know that kid. Maybe he'll let me come in there and do something yeah. weird and in the ice cream shop and it's nice to purge man it's it's cool it's fun to sell all the instruments and all your gear to do the next thing like you're forced to have to live in this place of creativity with nothing i, I think that's i don't know there, there's something fun in that for sure you know? man. Uh, that, that's really interesting to hear all that uh do you spend you know we're talking a lot about kind of the future and, and how you've adapted and all that do you spend a lot of time looking back reflecting on on what you've done on your career you know um I, I sometimes do. I know that people always say celebrate the small victories and the big victories and things. But uh, a lot of times I think I don't like doing that too much because you can kind of get caught up in doing. I remember having conversations when we were on RCA Records and Headbangers Ball and stuff. And we had a great ride and great season. And when that was coming to an end, the people around me were kind of like, well, we've done a lot more than a lot of people out there have done, you know? And it's like that sound of yeah, like slightly yeah. defeat. It's a yeah. slight, like, well, if we hung it up today, we still have outdone the numbers that most people get to do. And so I, I really don't like to live in that world too much. 
you know, and maybe it's uh, maybe I should celebrate things a little bit more when they happen. But for the most part, it's just kind of like it's done. It's put out. We it's let's just forget about it. And let's just move on to the next thing. Cause yeah. life's kind of short, man. So, well, and me, it's not for lack of gratitude. Like you sound very grateful, right? So it's not, there, there, there's like that balance of, yeah, being, a, being appreciative of what's come, but also not losing yourself in that. And so, you know, yeah. remaining grateful, but focusing, moving ahead. Yeah. Cause you could tie yourself to comfort easily sometimes, Easy, you know, yeah. with, with like a little success and you could take a break and go to the beach. Like, nah, no time for that. <laughs> <Just keep> that <laughs> right on, man. <laughs> So what's yeah. on the horizon for Bullets and Octane? Well, we're currently in the studio right now. We're going to be releasing a, a B-Sides and Demos album, I think, here in uh, August. It has a couple awesome. more music videos to go along with that. And with that album, I think there's like 12 songs, and there's been a video for every song that's been put out. So we're going to put that out. We're in the studio right now. We're still going to be probably doing some more stuff with Steve Stevens. We're looking for more collaborations. And we're just gearing up at the moment to finish up the big album to have ready by the end of 2024, most likely Sweet. early 2025. And just come out full blown swing and hit back on the road, get back to the UK and Sweden and things like that. Yeah. And uh, the 2025 is looking like the time. So we're just awesome. being patient <laughs> and getting through this year of the grueling studio work, you know, really putting ourselves yeah. to the fire on this one. So, you know? And then at what point do you ask Steve Stevens to just be a full blown member of the band? <laughs> Dude, I, I was, I hear you. You're completely, I always like to picture it. Like, wouldn't it be great if Steve Stevens became like the Pat Smear, the Foo Fighters, where yeah, he just kind of shows up when he wants to and yeah. I'm in town, I'll play guitar. You know, yeah. that would be amazing. Uh, yeah. The door is always open for that guy, in my opinion. Right on. Awesome. Hey, we'll yeah. put that one out there too, man. Gene Lewis, thank you That's so right. much for hanging. Congrats on this, uh, on the song. No one gets out alive. The, the, the music video, stay caught up with everything going on in bullets and octane's world i think the best way is instagram tiktok just follow uh, bullets and octane official uh gene man you are welcome back anytime brother really great to catch up can't wait to see what's next thank you so much man have an awesome day that wraps up this episode of loudwire nights on demand stay caught up with everything happening in the world of rock and metal on the loudwire app and at loudwire.com 